Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. If you are new, welcome back. If you're returning, I want to preface the video by saying I'm not a true crime expert. I am simply a true crime fan. We've been covering the case because Micah's death has been officially ruled as an unaliving. I do hate using words like that just to follow YouTube's guidelines, but just know that's why I avoid using certain words. So take everything as my opinion unless it's been proven under the court of a law. I don't want to get sued. Before we react to some of today's content. J.P. Miller allegedly has been trying to close off our court documents uh, being released to the public, as well as silence content creators such as myself who are documenting um, this case and the details that are coming forward. Now for an innocent man, why would you? Uh, it's a little late for that because everything has basically been online. Please keep in mind, I'm learning with you as we go. I don't know everything. So some of these videos I haven't even seen and I'm going to be reacting to first time on camera with you now. The first video comes from Dad checking in one. Hey, what's up? So I posted a video earlier about Micah Miller's best friend, Charlotte, and the phone call that she received the day after Micah died. I know nothing about a phone call to Charlotte, so this is new personally to me. The phone call that she received was from JP, and what he said really disturbed her. Because this was the day after Micah had died, and JP said he was calling with more details. What he told her was he thought Micah was headed to her house. So JP, that day, he is supposed to be in Charleston, with his girlfriend Susie Skinner at a or at his son's sports game so that's his alibi so while he's there supposed to be there and doing this he's tracking Micah but we knew he was tracking Micah on a lot of different occasions but I thought JP and Susie were claiming that they were like just friends and there was no like girlfriend what so while he's there supposed to be there and doing this he's tracking Micah but we knew he was tracking Micah on a lot of different occasions. But two days earlier, two days prior to this, he was served papers, divorce papers, and a restraining order. That meant he really couldn't do that anymore. She had a car that wasn't provided by JP. And she had already taken the trackers off the car. We talked about in one of my last videos how she had just um, paid for registration and for... Um, oh my gosh, registration and inspection or something like that. She's put money into her car and then she was borrowing another car. Uh, there were some theories about that in my comments in my last video, but I think I'm going to have to watch this TikTok again because I'm a little confused. Well, maybe there were some new ones on there. She had a new phone. So with no trackers that she knew of and a new cell phone, which he didn't know about, he was still tracking her. So was he tracking her with those guys from the pawn shop? Was that how he was tracking her? Or did he have some kind of surveillance on her through her phone or on her car? I don't know. But it means that the day she died, JP was tracking her. Wherever he was at, he was tracking her. So he knew she was headed north and he had to stop her. He probably did think she was going to Charlotte's house in Virginia but he had to stop her. He couldn't let her get away. He couldn't let her get that far out of his reach. I think it was if he knew if she got to Virginia, he would never get her back and she would be up there and able to spill the beans and tell all of his secrets. He didn't let her get there. He didn't let her get past the gas station. Let's find justice for Micah. I will post a quick picture of the gas station she was the last seen at because there is a side profile view of the gas station as well. The surveillance shows the front of the gas station, but on the side of the gas station, there is a porter pot. I want to bring your attention to the pawn shop surveillance because I want to point out one of the suspects in here that is possibly working with JP. So he might not have trackers on her at this point, but he might definitely have eyes on her. So Micah does go straight up to the counter which corresponds with the timeline that we looked at. She was not there to browse. She was there for a reason. So she goes right up to the counter to speak with the salesman. So Micah's demeanor while buying the weapons seems actually quite pleasant. She seems to be smiling, making small talk with the sales associate. So nothing really, like she doesn't look depressed or 
scared or like looking over her shoulder like she seems like she's pretty calm at least based off of the video that we've seen now the guy in question comes into our video and he's wearing all black he has the white sneakers on with the baseball cap and the reason that he has our eyebrows raised is because he enters the pawn shop and he doesn't seem to actually be purchasing anything this reminds me of when I follow my partner into like Home Depot and he's looking around and I'm not there to like really buy something or look like I'm just looking at the most random random objects because look he even comes up to like the posters on the side of the what's so damn interesting nothing he is just he's trying to be nonchalant in my opinion Micah is signing her form again talking to the sales associates no issues there she signs and she goes off next we're brought to the front of the gas station so again the picture that I showed you with the porta pot that is on the side that you can't see first time is when we see the black truck coming down the road he just does a big loop around and then pulls out and goes the same direction I honestly believe Micah had just pulled over there to use the restroom and now she was circling back around at this point to fill up on some gas so we see her walking inside when she's walking inside this is the second time that we see this truck we don't know for sure if it's the same truck but it is another black pickup so it could be speculated that maybe this is the same person again keeping their eyes on Micah at this point we're not really sure but I think it is worth noting that this vehicle is acting very suspicious it did take a left out this time instead of a right at this point we see Micah come out and she immediately takes the pump off of the nozzle so that tells me she probably paid inside her demeanor again seems very calm she doesn't seem nervous she doesn't seem like she feels like she's being followed or in danger in any way and I did wonder that in a previous video so that question has been answered for me just to see that she just seems very calm and nothing nothing seems out of the ordinary at the moment when she's pumping her gas this is when we're gonna see the truck for the third time I don't know if this is anything but investigators are noting that Micah is just sort of swaying maybe looking off in the distance daydreaming you know when you're filling gas but I will note that when the truck does pass it seems like her swaying does come to a halt I don't know if that's just coincidence but again it's something worth noting I could even see the gap between her legs when the car passed by like they weren't it wasn't getting smaller or bigger meaning that she was standing still so I don't know if she was like in a frozen state or like starting to recognize that hey maybe I've seen that car pass once or twice and maybe something is up for that but even after the truck passes for the third time she doesn't seem any sort of panicked she calmly takes the pump off the nozzle puts it back on the station covers her cap and jumps in the car I'm wondering if it will eventually pop up that that black truck was at the Lumber River State Park at all. 